Elaine and I went one morning and we went over here to 6th Commercial and the lights green for 27 seconds. It took me 33 seconds to walk across the street. We need to get that time longer. When we were first approached about the community capacity building project, um, we tried to think of something that we already had in place um, rather than reinventing the wheel. And it was a natural fit that the friends groups who come together monthly would be a great opportunity for um, uh, the groups to get together and talk about issues that they're facing. And uh, we sent out a challenge to each of the groups to identify an advocacy uh, topic in their local community that they um, felt strongly enough that they wanted to work on as a group. Well, most of us live right here at Broadview. So we sit and we get together, we visit, we help each other out. And whenever we uh, go to the meetings, it uh, helps us to associate a little more with one another, whereas maybe we wouldn't visit as much and to, to hear one another's concerns. It's just a good time of fellowship, you know, everybody, if they have other concerns or um, things that they've noted in the community or problems they've been having, we come and talk to it about it as a group. So it's really a good time. Um, so many times people think that they're just one person and they may not make a difference. But as our groups show, one person brings up an issue um, and others realize they have the same issue and it kind of snowballs into a, a larger movement. It's a feeling of empowerment. Disabilities um, don't necessarily have to stop someone, but we have the will if somebody can provide the way. It was a long process. We worked on it slowly. You know, we'd come out for 15 or 20 minutes, perhaps. Yeah. Then we eventually contacted the city, and they came. Then they contacted the Department of Transportation in Hutchison, and they came and actually did the timing. They were very organized, and it's amazing that once they identified, they systematically developed a plan to do research, first of all, to learn more about it before they just went and tried to advocate. Uh, and they were very passionate about it and very involved um, and taking a role. You know, the leaders emerged from the Friends Group, and they helped to um, facilitate the process. And, with myself, you know, I'm in an electric chair, so for me it was the button. I could not reach the button, so they did an extension on it. So I just started speaking up, knowing what areas I had difficulty in, and they would note them down, and before I knew it, things got improved, and I was surprised. I'm moral support and helping the facilitators, um, you know, as they um, run into barriers. Um, I'm able to help them brainstorm and I can pass down the ideas that I've learned from the other centers who were involved in the project from all around the country. And the Community Toolbox was another resource that we're able to use to help them identify ways to advocate in their communities. Well, RCIL has always been a great company about uh, advocating for oneself. So they taught me a lot of things about learning to advocate and uh, speak up. and. Um, certainly, whenever there's any community advocacy that's um, done and has a successful result, not only does it benefit the people who are involved in that advocacy, but people who don't even realize there was a problem to begin with. So whether that's um, a mother pushing a, a stroller across an intersection or someone who wants to walk across the street, they don't realize necessarily the work that all went in um, to getting those stoplights changed and made uh, more safe for the entire community. If it's something that's really for everybody, I'll push for it. When they have the success, it motivates them to be uh, more active and take on other challenges in the community. And even just giving them the self-confidence to not, not necessarily advocate, but to be involved in um, boards such as Accessibility Advisory Committee or even something as, um, as big as running for um, local office. or As they increase their confidence through advocacy, it can certainly lead to a lot of other opportunities for them in the community. Emporia says that it's an inclusive community, but it's even more inclusive because an independent living centers like RCIL, it enables people to become involved.